May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> this morning, again, in just a few short verses, we hear the beginning of the great covenantal story. God makes a promise to Abram. He will be the forebear of a great nation. It is a story of blessing. Now, the stories that follow creation, if you remember, are for the most part stories of curses. God curses the lives of Adam and Eve and the serpent too. God destroys the whole world except for Noah. God causes the confusion of all language effectively severing the populations of the earth at the Tower of Babel. But now, with Abram, the story of creation resumes. Now a creation in which Abram participates and which through him will be blessed in time as well as space, in history as well as locale. Life in the garden of earthly delights had no duration until the expulsion. Now time and place are linked. The land will be his forever, and Abram's generations will never cease. In music theory, a triplet is a three-note pattern that fills the duration of a typical two-note pattern. Even one triplet can inject complex rhythm into a musical phrase. For example, and now a sermon about the theology of marriage and its connection to the covenant between God and Abram. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. There is a at the beginning of this story, a wonderful literary triplet, which would have the similar effect. Uh, and such triplets in literature intensify the meaning, the meaning. Go from your country, your kindred, and your father's house. From your country, your kindred, and your father's house. It is as if the storyteller wants us to feel the full effect of being called out by God to this whole new existence as Abram's departure is brought down to the personal, your land, your birthplace, your family. When Abram is called out, he doesn't go alone. He takes his whole household with him. Yet his call is to the world, not just his clan. The world, not just what will become of of become of the Hebrew people. For Abram is told, by you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The covenant that Abram accepts by pulling up stakes and leaving Haran for Canaan, not named so far, is a covenant that implies a commandment. Abram will bless all the nations. He is to be a blessing to them before they can become one to him. What a great message to us. Is that not what we are to be, a blessing to the world? The Reverend Sam Wells, vicar of St. Martin in the Fields in London, writes of this story of Abram this way. Here we discover what blessing is really about. Blessing is not fundamentally about the security that comes through more land, more children, more wives, more camels or donkeys, or SUVs, pages on your CV, university degrees, honors, houses, holidays, awards, endowments, or clothes. Blessing is fundamentally about others being able to trace their sense of well-being and peace and joy to you. Blessing is about others being able to trace their sense of well-being and peace and joy to you, to us. 
In the Great Commission to the disciples, Jesus sends them to the entire world, to the round earth's imagined corners, if you will. Here with Abram, 1,600 years before Jesus Christ speaks his commission to the disciples, God, not yet known in Christ, speaks a similar commandment. From the beginning, you see, to be the chosen people, the inheritors of a promised land is to be people called out of whatever and wherever they are, to be a blessing of peace and well-being and joy to others. The very term church refers to called out persons. It is not as if you or I come here to a place where some have received a call and others are sort of waiting around for that to happen. No, every one of us here, whether we realize it or not, simply by being, are included in the called out people. Each of us responds in very different ways to that. Now let's look at the character of Nicodemus in today's gospel. He comes at night so he can hide his called outness. He doesn't want to be recognized by others as one of the followers of Jesus. When he appears in John's gospel again, he will do so with the even more famous Joseph of Arimathea, who is also referred to as one who comes to Jesus at night in order not to be recognized by his traditional Jewish associates. They didn't want to step out into the full light of day on this call, yet they both have a real ministry to perform and they both are remembered for it to this day. The point is that when we respond to God, we don't always know where we are going or where we will end up. I believe we are seeing that now as the church faces the challenges and opportunities and shares the joys and griefs of coming out of this pandemic. And even in the older and larger trends around people, property, and prosperity. Then, as it is now, response is a matter of faith. Faith that we will be with God. Faith that God has a plan for all that is and that we are a part of it. Faith that there is a promised land to which we are called. The trick is, it cannot be the promised land until we live out God's promise in the land. That is what Abram learned. We come here with the promise of Christ to be with us to the end of the ages, to give us power to be disciples, and to grant us a place in God's kingdom. Nicodemus learns that no longer is the promised land a place, Rather, it is life with God. We don't know what Nicodemus did about this at first. But we do know that at the end of Jesus' crucifixion, Nicodemus was there. Like all the others, he was surely grieving, surely wondering what now, surely agonizing over what had happened, asking how it could all come to this. Then... Joseph of Arimathea found him, and they lived out their call as they lovingly cared for the body of their friend. The story of our covenant with God is a story of a journey filled with promises, blind alleys, overshot goals, some bitter disappointments, and much hope for a place in the new Eden. When Abram leaves Haran, he doesn't even know the name of the place to where he was going. But he goes. And because he went, and because Nicodemus came to Jesus, and supremely because of Jesus' final self-sacrificing act, which would bring Nicodemus back to him in the late afternoon of despair, we at least know the way to where we are going to which we are called out, and for which St. Paul's is to be a sign on earth. We are on our way to live out the promise of Jesus Christ in a promised land that is no land, in a promised time 
that is no time. We are called out to live out God's promises and to be blessings of well-being and peace and joy to the world. Amen.